Hello, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I take my biochar. This is how it comes out of the pit burn. Quite big lumps, up to sort of a couple of inches or so. I'm gonna be crushing it, sieving it through a half inch sieve, and that makes it quite a finer product. It's not dust, it's not powder, but just little chunks that aren't gonna interfere with seed sowing or anything like that. And then I'm gonna be inoculating it with all the little goodies that you want in your biochar before putting it out on the veg garden. So let's get into it. So I've seen various different ways that people crush their biochar before inoculation or putting it in your compost, um, from putting it in sacks to driving over it to pounding it with sledgehammers. This is just how I've decided to do it. This is only my first burn, so I'm still sort of learning as I go. One thing I did realize pretty quickly um, is to dampen it down a bit because you get a lot of dust out and you don't really want to be breathing that in. So it's quite surprising how much water it takes. I, I gave it about half a watering can and it just soaked right into it and it kind of crackles like like breakfast cereal, <laughs> like snack crackle and pop, you know. Um, but you know, you want to dampen it down, stop the dust from coming up, and then I'll, I'm just putting a few scoopfuls into this first bucket and then what I do is I get this big bit of six by two this is quite heavy it's been outside and it's soaked um soaked with water and quite heavy and I'll give it a good pound with that a few times over And what I have, stay there, what I have also been, was trying was this bit of three by two. Again, you can pound it, but if, if you push on it and crush it, that seems to work quite well. So I've been, been doing a bit of both, a bit of pounding and a bit of grinding. And then I quite simply just tip that onto my half inch sieve. Give it a bit of a sieve through anything that hasn't gone through i'll just put back in there to go again so just finish off what i've got and that can just all be done again and that is giving me a nice usable product that, that won't interfere with seed sowing and that in the beds I'm sure there's a bit of powder there. You know, some of it will break down to, to slightly sort of dust size, but to, for me, I just don't want these, these big lumps if I'm trying to sow seed. So this is the way I'm gonna do it. So I'm just doing it like that and then putting it straight into sacks. So I've already got about half a sack there. So I think in total finished product, I'm probably gonna end up with a, about 50 litres. So I'm well happy with that. that. That was my first burn, and um, I'm just I'm really pleased with the way it's gone. So when biochar is first produced, it's um, sort of completely inert and it's ready to be charged to to absorb moisture and nutrients. And biochar itself will last, you know, in the ground for hundreds, possibly thousands of years. Um, so one thing you don't want to do with it is just take it like this and put it straight on your borders because it will end up sucking nutrients out of the compost, out of the soil to charge the biochar. So you need to kind of charge it, inoculate it before you use it. So what I will eventually be doing when I catch up with myself is just purely adding it to my compost seep. So every time I've put a layer of compost on, I'll come along with half a bucket of um, bagged up pre-ground charcoal and I'll just sprinkle it all over my my compost just just like I say half a bucket sprinkled over and then as the compost is all breaking down obviously it's going to be months being turned twice maybe three times and it will absorb nutrients out of the compost as it's going through that process so that's the easiest way really to do it and that is what I will eventually get to. This is the first pile that I'm using biochar in. 
I've got two piles that are almost finished and half a pile that I'm using. So that I will just put out on the beds and I will mix biochar with that, but I will inoculate it first. But this from this bed going forwards, I will just inoculate it purely by putting it into the compost. It's just the easiest way to do it for me. But I'll, I'll now show you how I'm going to inoculate biochar that I will mix with the compost I've already produced as I'm now topping up my beds through the autumn and winter ready for the spring. So I've put a, about 10 litres of, of biochar, crushed up biochar, into rainwater. All my water here is rainwater. It does float on the top a little bit to begin with, but if you keep sort of pushing it in, it, it starts to absorb and it seems to then sink a little bit. So all I'm doing is I've collected some of my vermicompost and I'm just, it's a bit wet, there's a bit of water in here. And I'm just gonna add a couple of scoops of that into the mix. I'll just give that a bit of a swim out. Get all those bits and bobs. And I'm just gonna mix this all together and just also add a little bit of unsulfured molasses just to feed the microbes, just to drizzle. This is almost empty. There you go, a couple of tablespoons or something. We're winter now, it's colder. They're not gonna be sort of proliferating as much as they would in the warmer weather, but it all helps, right? So I'm just gonna give this a good soak. And I've got bigger trugs, I've got um, trucks that are probably three or four times this size so I can do larger amounts if need be and then what I'll do I'll leave this for at least a day possibly two and um, I'll, I'll tip it through a sieve probably like a quarter inch sieve to catch all the char but it'll let all the water and any sort of dusty stuff pass through and then I can just incorporate that into my compost perhaps a couple of scoops sort of that's that sort of couple of those per wheelbarrow for now whilst i'm topping up my beds during the autumn like i say going forward i'll just be adding it and, and letting the compost itself inoculate it as it as it produces um, but for now this is a way of getting it fully inoculated with all the goodies and fully um hydrated ready to go out in the garden So I've left it soaking in the worm tea for a couple of days now. Every time I come down, I'll just give it a good mix, push it all back under. It still sort of tends to float float to the top a little bit, um, but it's well hydrated now. It's soaked up all that, all that goodness. And I'm just gonna strain it off now so that I can mix it with my composts <clears throat> ready for going on the bed. So. It should be quite simple because it's all at the top. So I'll just get the bulk of it off and then I can pour it. I'm not going to worry about getting it all out. It doesn't really matter. But I just want to get the bulk of the water out so that I can mix it better into my compost. So that'll do. And then the leftover water I'll just put on the, on the compost heap with all that goodness in and a bit of the biochar powder. That'll all just mix into the compost. And I'm just using a 1 8 of an inch sieve for this so that it's smaller than the sieve that I sieved the actual biochar with. Should be able to pour it now.
Right then, so I'll rinse that out and that can go on the compost too. Um, and all of that worm tea and powder can go on the compost. And then this is now fully activated, fully inoculated and ready to go in, in with the compost. Now, you can inoculate it with anything, manures, fertilizers, so anything that has got nutrients and goodness in it. I've, I've seen people do it with um, chicken pellets. Uh, I've seen a, a, quite a few people, seems quite popular doing it with um, like stale urine. So if you peed into a pot for a week, you know, and, uh, and poured that on it with some water, because you wouldn't, you'd have to save a lot to just fully soak it. It does just take up quite a lot of, of liquid. Um, but yeah, urine seems quite popular. Obviously urine does have a, a certain amount of nitrogen and minerals and things in it. So that, that does seem a popular one. I just want to do it with my worm compost because that's what I've got available, which is good. I've got some chicken pellets and I, I may incorporate that with the worm compost, perhaps in the next batch. I'm just going to play around with it really. I'm, I'm still learning. Um, so that there's no one set in stone way of doing it. Just just use whatever you've got your hands, hands on really. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I have measured, just because I'm wanting to sort of see what percentages I'm getting, I've measured out four, uh, 40 of these scoops into here. So I, I know that basically a level, level-ish wheelbarrow full, and that'll just give me enough room to turn it and incorporate it. So I can now measure out how many scoops that I wanna put to this. You know, four, four heat scoops would be about 10%. Um, you know roughly um, now I'm not going to be able to produ produce enough biochar for the amount of wheelbarrows of, of um, compost that we put out in the garden so I think I'm probably just going to put one scoop for now per level wheelbarrow um, and that, that would just start getting some on the ground and then like I say I'll, I'll keep doing that until the compost that I'm producing that already has the biochar in it is the stuff that I'm then putting out on the garden. So for now, to actually get it on the garden for next spring, I'm just gonna have to do it this way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a heaped um, scoop full like that and just sprinkle it over the top. And then just give it a mix in. As I say, I'm putting, putting about, now that I've got my beds fairly, fairly well done since starting a couple of years ago, I'm putting about two heaped barrelfuls, so two and a bit of these level ones, two and a half probably of these level ones per bed, and I've got 26 beds. So I think, like I say, I'm gonna to struggle to get any more biochar made um, to put any more than one scoop per wheelbarrow, but every little helps, every little helps. So that's just mixed in and it will get mixed in as I rake it out on the beds and stuff as well. So that's basically what I'm doing going forwards. Um, one scoop per wheelbarrow, and as well as trying to make enough to start adding to the compost pile that I'm making now, um, and that'll be ready sort of summertime next year. Um, so yeah, that's it really, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is something that I will try and do a few more videos of going forwards because I'm still sort of trying to perfect it. It's only my first burn, my first time I'm adding it to the compost. So as, as I improve what I'm doing, as I learn a bit more about it, I'll show you some more videos too. But um, hope you enjoyed it anyway, guys, and found it interesting. But uh, take it easy and we will see you next time.